And as uh, we emerge from about two-thirds of the course content, one overpowering impression which must be clear to all of you is that organization management has at the heart of it issues of uh, task, design, structure, processes. It is one of those areas which is unique and exclusive to management and it is not a migration from some of the other disciplines. For example, if you do a shop floor analysis, a lot of it is a, an extrapolation of what you do in manufacturing management or if you do an attitudinal survey, a lot of it is an extrapolation of psychology. But over the decades as management matured, it developed its own areas which are unique to management. And amongst them would be organization management, marketing, advertising. They have not been borrowed from any other discipline or adapted from it. Therefore, it is important to us to understand the nature of the subject matter and that is always an issue on, uh, on any discussion which has to do with uh, organization management. No organization structure can function unless the processes are in position. Processes <coughs> move the organization just as structure gives shape to the organization. They cause the flow and what keeps an organization going is the information flow. Of course, there are other flows and if you do not know the subject matter, you are always inclined to look upon your own functional specialization as the key specialization whereas it need not be so. So, we are going to spend time looking at uh, the nature of organizational processes and I wish you to understand that the system continuously has to make this choice. What is the choice? It can either continue to exploit a known process and make it more productive or it can explore a new process at the cost of being less efficient. It is like finding your way in a city from one point to another. The principle is very simple. When in a hurry, take the known path, then you do not get lost. But on the other hand, if you explore the unknown, you may find that you have cut short your time by two thirds. So, the core of entrepreneuring is risk taking. In fact, the character of uh, Entrepreneurship is risk taking for profit maximization. But those of you who are interested in finance will recognize that uh, risk management has become an increasingly large proportion of financial investment. So, if continuous improvement is the order of the day and you can't survive without continuous improvement, then innovation is the heart of the matter. If innovation is the heart of the matter, you have to take risks to be creative. <clears throat> However, if I say cost of being less efficient, it does not mean that it will be less efficient but there is a possibility of its being lef less efficient. This is not a perfect formulation because if you do the logical uh, derivation of this formulation, then it follows that you should not look for change. Now, I am coming in to explain, A, it is not my formulation. It is a formulation which has been handed over a period of time and I do believe that any process of learning first requires the process of unlearning. You can't move unless you agree to get up from your chair and change your seat. If you insist on occupying the same seat 
and the security of a known place to sit, then forget about movement. Presumably, I am talking to people who believe that improvement is the order of the day and change is inherent. Therefore, you have to see the fallacy of this statement. It says either it can continue to exploit a known process or explore a new process at the cost of being less efficient. Therefore, it would follow that in terms of 2 plus 2 equaling 4, if you explore a new process, you are bound to become less efficient, but that is not what it means. It does not say you are bound to become less efficient. So, listening to this statement and looking at this statement, you must understand you are dealing with live processes and they are the heart of any organization. What is the perspective? The processes within an organization can be classified using various criteria as they vary from <coughs> processes of decision making, processes of planning, processes of organization design and structuring, processes of staffing, processes of directing, motivating, communicating and also of controlling. Now, each process is a distinct process. The processes through which you exercise the control mechanism <coughs> sorry, will not be the processes through which you will exercise the design mechanism. It is a completely different ball game. All of which are totally different but equally significant as a process within the organization. Therefore, there is a whole typology of processes. And I hope as we go through the presentation, you will be able to see how many different types of processes there are, what are their defining characteristics, what are the purposes they serve and how best they can they be used. For the purposes of this discussion, we shall focus on planning and decision making, organization design and workflow communication and information flow. Obviously, not everything can be covered. Now, if everything can't be covered, the selection has to be exercised with reference to the overall objectives of the course and that is what I propose to do here. Let us look at planning and decision making. Planning is the most basic function of management being concerned with the conscious de <coughs> determination of the courses of action required to achieve predetermined objectives. Now, of course, that is put in a definitionally tight format. What, me, what it means is planning is sequencing a course of action from where you are to where you want to be. Planning is like a road map. And those of you who have been exposed to computerized uh, automobiles would know that uh, you can put it all on a computer and if you do not know the destination, you program that destination and the computer tells you very mechanically 200 meters turn to the right, 10 meters turn to the left. It is all programmed. In other words, somebody has walked that route and determined a sequence of actions. That is planning being taken to its logical conclusion. But before you do that, you will have to ask yourself, do you have the resources to undertake that route? For example, is your car in a working order? Do you have enough petrol? And the, I, I, can, I, can, I can talk of a whole host of resources. Therefore, planning is not necessarily a very detailed activity. It may be. 
So, there is a process of planning and I intend to spend some time discussing with you the processes of planning. It is also viewed as decision making since it is to decide in advance about what is to be done. That is the plan. When it is to be done, by whom it is to be done and how it is to be done. Now, let us understand these four questions in a, in a management format. What is to be done is the objective. And from the objectives, you get the content. When it is to be done is the sequencing. It is the timing. By whom it is to be done is the process of staffing, which uh, in human resources terms is called the processes of manpower allocation how many people, in what department, in what division, in what skills, <coughs> not only that, in what order. The issues of staffing come under by whom it is to be done and how it is to be done, we go back to our, the favorite duo of capability. How it is to be done will be determined by capability. Or put very simply, competency, which is why in organization mapping, competency mapping is a very important tool. If you do not have a competency map of the people who are with you, then how do you position them? Unless you have the inventory of the skills available to you and you know which individuals has what. How do you decide who, by whom it is to be done? Not only that, more often than not, this person will have to be given the prerogative of deciding when it is to be done. Pre-programming can be done only up to a point. The planning process therefore deals with crystallizing the opportunity or a problem. The word problem in management means very different from the word problem in everyday language. The word problem in management is used in the sense of a, a proposition, not to be confused with preposition, a proposition. It is a statement and no matter what is the situation, management seeks to improve that situation. In other words, state the problem, state the situation and then irrespective of what it is, you look for interventions to improve that proposition. Securing and analyzing the necessary information. No decision making can take place without adequate information. And yet the reality of decision making is, when a decision is to be taken, the decision is to be taken with a speed which usually does not give you the chance to gather all the relevant information. A thief has entered your house and then you say, ah, Mr. Thief, could you just wait while I look at my computer and figure the configuration of the room design and let me get the information on who is awake, who is asleep and <clears throat> then I will decide what is the best way of intercepting you? Because I went to an MBA class and my teacher taught me no action can be undertaken without proper data and I will convert that data into information. You just wait for a moment, will you? It does not work that way. It is here that planning gets into the act. You must have 
a plan to meet a contingency. And you must be drilled enough in the decision making process for that to take place as a reflex action. Clearly, you have no time for asking for information, you have no time for calling for a meeting, you have no time to switch on the computer, you have no time to start surveying. Action requires prior preparation for all types of situation. <clears throat> More often than not, it also requires proper recall, which is why of the attributes in management, recall and ability to analyze with speed is an important capability. Unless you do that, you will find that you are a poor decision maker. And since the entire purpose of this course is help you to be a better decision maker, I am trying to help you to understand whereas securing and analyzing necessary information is a critical step. It cannot be wished away. It must be done in advance. And you must be drilled into the standing operating procedure to work on it quickly. The processes there get collapsed. <coughs> you do not start expanding the processes to cover all the steps which you have learnt in a class. Establishing planning premises and constraints. All planning is under constraints. Life itself is under constraints. All action is under constraints, which is why the better managers do not talk of constraints because constraints there will always be. If you are dependent upon your parents and you start dating, then the constraint is if, if uh, your activity is not with their approval, your sources of funds may dry up. Very practical problem. And no matter how much you huff and puff, it is my life. Good. Get your own capital. Get your own house. Move. A lot of confusion takes place because people play fast and loose. In communities which some like to imitate, the teenager starts earning at the age of 13, 14. <coughs> Sorry. He is not dependent upon his parents till the age of 23 to buy a motorbike. Daddy, I want a motorbike. He goes and earns it. Now, just running with the hare and hunting with the hound is totally <coughs> sorry, unavoidable phenomenon. If you want that kind of freedom, you must earn it. In other words, constraints are inherent in every situation. And then when you start earning, you find that the time for him or her has automatically reduced. Because nobody gives you money in free packets, reservation or no reservation. Money will always have to be earned. So, how do the processes emerge? The processes emerge out of constraints. And any thinking man begins with first understanding his constraints. Now, the damsel does not step out of her house unless you produce a German car. I would not name the brand. You have nothing other than your grandfather's vintage ambassador. 
tough luck. Taste is a constraint. Then of course you can write all your poems, there is no problem with that. How wonderful I am and how great I am and how devoted I am and there you are. You want a BMW. Yeah, she wants a BMW. Because she knows that at the end of the day, you will turn sour, but the BMW will stay green. <laughs> now, if you think I am joking, yeah, I am joking. But I can't be joking to entertain you. There is a serious proposition behind it. What is, pro what is the proposition? The values determine the constraints. Values are not just ethical propositions. Values are your entire persona. There are a lot of people who are comfortable sleeping on the pavement. There are people who can't sleep unless they get into a king size bed, turn on the AC, turn on the fan and pull two quilts on top of them. Now what kind of a taste is that? You look around and you will find that it is a pretty common taste. Now you ask them to sleep out on the pavement, they have a problem. So values create constraints. Everything is a constraint and an asset. An innovative person converts the constraint into an asset. And there is a sukti, like many good sayings in classical languages, and this is from Sanskrit. Veera bhogya vasundhara. Vasundhara ka bhog veer karte hai. Vasundhara kahte hai prithvi ko. The planet shall be enjoyed and shall be the surrogate of the brave. And the word brave doesn't mean the capacity to jump off the seventh floor. That is rank stupidity. Bravery means the capacity to take calculated risks. Which if you recall what I said a little earlier, is the heart of innovation. So if you are innovative, you inherit the earth. You will ultimately notice that all management principles are rooted in some sound life principles. Please try to recall what I said in some sessions preceding this. You can't be a good manager without being a good human being. Take that from me. And if you think crookery is the way to good management, after all, it's your life. Welcome to experiment it. Find out for yourself. Uncertain, ascertaining alternative courses of actions or plans. Planning leads to generation of options and generation of options leads to greater effectiveness. That is the logic. The more options you generate, greater are your chances of success because the more effective will be the route you will take. So if success has a prerequisite, it is the ability to generate options. The planning process is the best insurance of generating viable options. Then you select the optimum plan. And please notice the emphasis as I have indicated with this arrow, optimum not maximum. The concept of maximal is a myth. There is no such thing as maximal. 
hundred percent is a theoretical impossibility. Ultimately, you have to optimize. And then the heart of management is fixing the time of introduction. In other words, there is such a thing as the management of business and management of risks. Arranging future evaluations of effectiveness of the plan, which plan do you select? Which plan has the largest chance of being successful? So that ultimately, after you have generated options, you must learn to assess and evaluate options to choose appropriately. There are different types of plans classified based on time dimension, short term, long term and of course wherever there is short term and there is long term, there is always the medium term. So good engineers should ask how long is the short term? No, there was, there was no tape manufactured to measure time. But the fact that a question can't be answered hasn't caused a situation where people will desist from asking it. So anticipating that, I have already put there, extending generally up to a year. Now there is nothing sacrosanct about it. But talking of FQAs or FAQs, sir, how long is short term? Three and a half inches, my lad. Now, what happens, sir, if the entire cloth is of five inches, then three and a half inches is long term. No, but sir, I thought you were talking of time. Now you are talking of measurement. Yes, yes, yes. Because the length of a cloth can be measured. Time is eternal. Now, a stupid question deserves a stupid answer, which does not prevent people from asking the dumbest of questions. Please realize words like short, medium, long are relative words which will, <coughs> which will be answered with reference to the absolute available. If you have only 10 months available, how can one year be short term? But the moment somebody asks, frequently asked questions, how long is short term? You say one year, one year. Done. The answer is received. Now, whether that answer will work or not, by, by, by which time interaction is over. In other words, if there is to be a learning, the learning has to be inter internalized and the learning cannot be internalized till the spirit of the proposition is understood. So, the spirit of short, medium, long is that in the ultimate analysis, all such words have to do with the ultimate total availability. Classifying is based on functions, production planning, marketing planning, sales planning. There are different types of plans. Plans can be classified as, uh, into goals, obviously, strategies and tactics. And I have explained all this, therefore I do not want to walk you through it again. Standards. Now I am adding to what I have already told you, budgets, policies, procedures, programs, rules, methods. The list is not over here. The list will continue. And for the list to continue, you must work to a higher level of sophistication. For example, 
A couple of sessions down the line, I am going to talk to you about mechanization, <coughs> automation, computerization. These are variables which affect work performance. Plans can also be given a typology as per the machine support which they have. I have not talked of it here. The defining characteristic of management is it is a non-definitive discipline. And that is what makes it fascinating. There was a time when uh, people were uh, memorizing, there are three M's, meant material money, these are the resources. Then they realize these are not the only resources, there are so many other resources. Then they realize that besides the number of resources going up, their character is changing. There can be tangible resources, there can be intangible resources. So, I was once asked by someone, how can resources be intangible? And the way he ran his eyes around <coughs> almost seemed to convey to me, look I am so wise and look I am so profound and you are so stupid. Resources are resources only when they are touched, felt and I would have added smelt and tasted because these are the properties of matter. Till I said, handsome, what about time? The biggest resource is time. That is not a tangible resource. So, you cannot give to management that character of definitiveness which comes out of dealing with non-life substances. After you have had a most extensive list of resources, rest assured there are still more resources to be listed. In fact, the successful man sees far more resources than he can, than he can list. The types of plans then evolve into decision making. Decision making is the cognitive process leading to the selection of a course of action amongst alternatives and that is the decision making. Every decision making process produces a final choice. It can be an action or an opinion. Now, this is very important to register. In social sciences, commentary is an important component. What is a commentary? Commentary is an analysis of the ongoing. In engineering, there is no commentary. There is only a derivation and commentary can only be an opinion. Therefore, every decision making produces a final choice, it can be an action or an opinion. Now, of course, those of you who are not exposed to social sciences will find it very difficult to understand this. All it means is you have to raise your abilities to understand social sciences, because you cannot say I understand only quantification and I am a super duper engineer, so you must talk to me only in engineering language, otherwise I fall asleep. You may fall asleep, it is your prerogative, but then you are losing out on all types of opportunities of growth. Already a decision making, already an exercise of choice and of course, the smarter one then starts arguing about it. No, actually I was not sleeping, I was thinking with my eyes closed and I was all concentration, clap, clap, clap. Of the many games people play, the most dangerous is auto-suggestion, convincing yourself. And human beings have the rare capacity of convincing themselves of anything they want. 
and of course they begin by believing they are the smartest. That's the first auto suggestion. The second auto suggestion is, yeah, I can get away with it because I am the smartest. The third is not only will I get away with it, but I will make the other person look like a blinking idiot. Bravo me! Little realizing that the other son of a woman is just as smart as you are. Decision making with reality contact helps you to see which choices you can operate and which of them you are never meant to operate because you are pretty dumb, you are nowhere near utilizing that option. Which takes me back to one of my favorite paradigms of management, you can't be a good manager without sound reality contact and without sound self-awareness. It is not a crime to be dumb, three-fourths of the world is dumb anyhow. But of the three-fourths of the world, not even half of the three-fourths know that they are actually dumb. Which is really speaking, the grist mill of humor. The most laughable situation comes out of a person who is really dumb does not believe he is dumb. So, you, you should let it let him act out his dumbness and enjoy it. This is where entertainment industry is based. You back you go back to the classical characters of comedy, be they Lauren and Hardy or be, be they Chacha this and Chachi that. When a person acts without knowledge of how dumb he is, is entertainment born because the others have fun at his cost. And such people are common everywhere including the corporate world. The way to manage them is keep telling them that they are absolutely wonderful. Because those who are dumb have a tremendous propensity to empower themselves with new sense value. So, the basic law of industrial relations and you won't find it in an industrial relations book. Pamper the dumb, walk along with him. In other words, your choices will always be person specific. Now, if you want to total it all up as to what I have said in the last three minutes, your choice will be determined by the quality and the type of people you are dealing with. There is no such thing as an absolute reality. It is always a contextual reality. It begins when we need to know something that we do not know what. I have just explained that, I see no reason to ham it. Decision making is therefore a reasoning process which can be rational or irrational and can be based on explicit assumptions or tacit assumptions. All decision making has a backward linkage to some assumption. This is something which is not often appreciated. Every decision making has a backward linkage to some assumption. If nothing more, the data that I have is reliable. It may not be reliable, but you are making an assumption that it is reliable. The person that I am talking to cannot be trusted. He may be trustworthy, but your assumption is he is not to be trusted. So, all the decision making will then follow that, which takes me to a very significant takeaway if you people can register it. When you have put your foot in a booby trap where you should have gone to begin with, do not look at the booby trap, 
look at where your assumptions went wrong. A lot of success or failure is determined by the kind of assumptions which drive you. Your own assumption about your own intelligence, your own assumption about your financial worth. I was in a cottage emporium and I arrived this lad, I mean, he was at least 21, 22, I am calling him a lad because of the way he conducted himself and the way he asked his questions and took the replies. He had about 300 rupees with him, which he wanted to spend to buy a shawl. So he asked, show me some shawls. So this fellow looked at him very carefully and then showed him some shawls. And uh, he asked him, what is the kind of budget you have? So he said, budget is no constraint, any amount. Obviously, his assumption was, if I have 300 rupees, how costly can the shawl be? Assumption. So after he had taken a look at 15, 20, I don't know how many of them, he said, okay, tell me the price of this one. He said, 20,000 rupees. You could see his jaws fall. And he looked around and said, no, no, I was looking for something lower than that, maybe some thousands of rupees. He was not even looking at thousand. He should have really said, I'm looking at 300 rupees. She said, okay, the lowest shawl which I have is of 7,000 rupees. So he said, I'll come back. And uh, the salesperson said, good day, sir. Do come back whenever you feel like. He had clearly sensed the assumptions of this person had now, assumption can be rooted in facts. If you know how much shawls cost, then you don't have 300 rupees and you walk into a cottage emporium and you say, oh, show me the shawl. Money is no constraint. So it is in a cyclical relationships. Your information kit determines your assumption. Your assumptions help you in interpreting the information and through the two iterative processes, a decision is born or an opinion is born. Therefore, to decide means to cut off or in practical content to come to a conclusion. The meaning of decision making keeps changing. The meaning of decision making keeps changing because the content of decision making keeps changing. The decision making process are, at, uh, are of three time aspects of a decision. Past, in which the problems were developed and information collected. Present, where alternatives have to be evaluated and selected. Future, where decisions will be carried out. So decision making is a continuum. All managerial decision making is a continuum. Therefore, time battles are irrelevant. I am not interested in the past, it is dead and gone. The past is never dead and gone. You are what you are today because of your past, including the food which you ate when you were six years old. How is it dead and how is it gone? Or better still, oh, I don't believe in the past. Oh, how grand are you? You, 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 you need to be worshipped and celebrated. You don't believe in the past. And of course, there is no point in pontificating unless you do it with a, a certain kind of an accent. You can't just say, I don't believe in the past. When you say, I don't believe in the past, you're supposed to say, I don't believe in the past. You're out there. The past is forever present. What is the difference between the past, present, and the future? Present is the time for evaluation and selection. 
that is the significance of the present. But the future is now. And how is the future now? The future is now because what you are doing now will be your future. So your choices of today create your competencies for the future. You don't have to wait for the future to come. There are certain steps of decision making and remember we are talking of processes and we are now linking processes to decision making. So what are the steps? Define and crystallize the problem. Secure and analyze the pertinent facts. Develop alternative solutions or courses of action. And then of course the rest of the chain you know. We have covered that. <clears throat> the not so charming thing about life is most people don't even know they have a problem. And if you don't know you have a problem, you obviously can't solve it. Therefore, awareness is the first important step in problem solving. Then get the relevant facts to it. What are the facts? The facts to recapitulate are the constraints and the strengths you have in that situation. And ultimately all decisions have to be converted into effective action. There are different types of decisions. Organizational decisions, personal decisions, basic or non-programmed decisions, routine or programmed decisions, group decisions. And again this list can be extended. Now everyone is not good at every kind of decision making. To make a managerial mark, you must be able to figure out what kind of decision making you are particularly good at. Here is a brief list, there can be others. You can have a classification of decisions with the kind of tools which it requires. You may be very good with figure work, but you may be terrible with analysis. You may be very good at analysis, but you may be very good, very, very inept in figure work. Therefore, just as all decision making is contextual, all choices are personal. Every choice has to be rooted in your own potential. Then there are techniques of decision making. Managers at various levels use several techniques for decision making and some of them are SWOT analysis, analytic hierarchy process, buyer decision processes and I am going to stop there and come back and explain it because when you talk of decision making processes you are really opening a new chapter.